Dull, dirty, and dangerous. These are the jobs ClearPath Robotics is working to automate. Founded in 2009 by four University of Waterloo Mechatronics Engineering grads, ClearPath and its sister company, Auto Motors, develop hardware, software, and services to enable self-driving vehicle development, deployment, and fleet operation. The award-winning company works with over 500 of the world's most innovative brands in over 40 countries, serving markets that span industrial materials handling, mining, military, agriculture, aerospace, and academia. I think there's two different answers, or a few different answers to what I love about robots. I mean, in general, I think a lot of people, myself included, are really interested by this, this concept of another being, or, or creating another being, or, or almost like a pet in some ways. But more from a, a more a practical perspective, we as society really rely on too many people like too much of society to do what, what the robotics community would term dull, dirty, and dangerous jobs. ClearPath was founded by myself and, and three of my friends from university, and we saw the potential for unmanned systems back in 2007, 2008, and really wanted to build a company that could support this, this next generation of technology. The, what we saw to be a coming robotics revolution. ClearPath is, is made up of ClearPath Robotics, which is the largest provider of robotics research equipment in the world, as well as Auto Motors, which is a provider of autonomous mobile robots for factories and warehouse automation. The kind of person who works here is usually quite driven. They want to make a difference. They're smart, they enjoy working in a team, but I think they also have a, a sense of perspective. Um, robotics and autonomous systems is a very new field and it's a very multidisciplinary field and it's very important that you know where you are very good at and also where you need to rely on others to help support you. People care deeply and uh, particularly the sorts of people who are, are relocating from outside of Canada in some cases, they care deeply about the culture and where they're relocating. Now of course um, every, every business owner uh, can and should seek to pay people more and not just lean on the culture of the region. But when it comes down to it, I've spent a lot of time as, as part of my job around the world, and I definitely, I definitely prefer this area. There's a lot of space, there's a growing culture, there's proximity to Toronto, um, and I think it's important for, all of, um, for the region as a whole to not try to out Silicon Valley, Silicon Valley, as, a, as an example which is often brought up. Um, fortunately, we as a company have always been very remote work friendly. So that included things like these uh, telepresence robots that we've had here. Um, so we've actually had these for, I think, four or five years. And there, anyone in the company can, what they call is uh, beam in, take control of one of these robots and join a stand-up meeting or view um, different behavior from a robot or different behavior from the robots on the floor or anything like that. Um, just the other day, um, a Shipment got sent to me at the office and I wasn't quite sure where it was going to go. So I logged into one of these and just kind of started driving around the office looking for someone. Um, and that sort of thing has actually helped us significantly even, you know, before the situation. And it's allowed us to be able to support work, not only from, you know, remotely in case of, you know, snow days or someone, uh, someone needing to, you know, wait for a delivery. But on the more extreme case, we do have people who you know, who collaborate with us from Europe or the US. So this sort of thing has, has really helped. And back here, it's just general tests. Um, robots outnumbering people here is normal. Um, we normally have, you know, something like a five to one or 10 to one ratio of robots to people. But here is where we do a lot of development tests. So when someone is writing software or coming up with, with new algorithms for our systems, they will test on their, they'll, they'll do some initial tests on their computer. They will run it through the simulation, our simulation tools. And then once we believe that it is, it is worth a, uh, 
a full software build, we will put it on these systems and run it through uh, several tons of autonomous robot. This particular software here, this changes on a daily basis. Um, we actually have our own, our own robots testing at our assembly plant as well, or running at our assembly plant, and those use more stable versions of our software. And then obviously, that's the sort of thing that you need when you're dealing with companies like a Toyota, for example. You really need to make sure your software is very good um, because you're not allowed to give them an update you know, you know, every hour or something like that if you don't get it right. Updating your software for a production line is a procedure that needs to be planned days or weeks in advance. So because of that, we need to test. I think I always have a, a soft spot in my heart for the uh, the Husky robot, uh, as, as we call it. It was the first robot from ClearPath Robotics to really, uh, to really gain traction in the market and to really put us on the map. Um, and also in, also in some ways because it still runs some code that I wrote. It's a good robot, it just, it just keeps, they just keep driving. It's been used for all sorts of different research around the world, whether it's research for self-driving cars, for you know, planetary or lunar or Mars exploration, to most recently disinfection research, just you know, farming, mining. It's, it's used whenever someone has an idea of where to put a robot in a, a dangerous environment, the, um, the Husky's great for it. Well before I co-founded the company, I, I spent some time working on an assembly line and I know exactly how, how difficult it is to work on factories. I remember seeing a video of a deployment with our auto line of vehicles where they were I think it was about 20 robots at a factory in the United States. And the video was the factory running in full production. And the people I saw working were just casually walking around, having conversations with each other, you know, carrying boxes of tools around and what have you. And everything else was moving entirely via the auto robots that we built. Um, they were moving all of this stuff around. Now, if you went to a a more traditional factory, not only would there be people walking around with tools, but there'd be people walking around, you know, frantically pushing carts, right? Trying to get these, trying to get these parts to the assembly machines on time, trying to get them shipped out the door. And in this case, it was all done by the robots. And what struck me wasn't that there were no people there. It was that the people that were there seemed to be working in a pretty casual way. Right, they didn't seem to be locked to the assembly line. It looked like they could take a break whenever they wanted. It looked like they were, you know, a lot <laughs> enjoying their job a lot more than the than the the people that used to have to be working in that in that site. 